by the Word with Apostle and Teacher Lior Joseph. Let's tune in to hear from the Word of God. Praise the Lord and welcome to all of you who have taken time to view Living by the Word. As always, it is an honor that the Lord has afforded us a privilege to be able to come to you with the living word of the Lord. We always want you to remember this. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. And also remember this. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Today, I, I want to just greet you in the name of the Lord and to let you know that God loves you. He really, really does. And maybe you might be feeling unloved today. Something has happened in your life and, you know, really upset you. But I just want to let you know, my friends, no matter what it is, God loves you. He cares for you. And he wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. Yes, indeed, he does. And you might be feeling all alone. You might be feeling discouraged. You might be frustrated. You might be anxious. You might be going through a storm. Whatever it is that you're going through, God loves you. Join with me. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are your people. You've called us to speak to them, your word. And this is the encouraging word, God, that we bring to them that you love them. Whatever they're going through, the discouragement of frustration, feeling unloved, and God, whatever it is, Lord, may they be able to embrace your love the love of God that is coming on to them today. You demonstrated it by sending your son to die for them. How much more can you do? Lord, may they embrace your love. May they embrace your love that comes with grace. Whatever is their problem, whatever is their hurts, Lord, help them. Help them, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. A wife is coming to greet you. Praise the Lord. And we know that God loves you. He cares for you. And that's why Jesus died on the cross for you. And he says that you need to give him praise at all times. And so I always say that everything, everything, regardless of what you're going through right now, give God praise. And praise will break that thing. Praise will bring the blessings down for you. Open your mouth and start praising the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. And those words that you would speak, they are power, they are life, and they can change your life for the good or for the bad. So what would, would you do? Say the right thing and let the right thing happen to you. Amen. So right now we're going to dive into our teaching like they say. And uh, we're talking about the power of words. The power of words. And our scripture that we are teaching from, our foundational scripture, is in the book of Proverbs chapter number 18. 
and verses 20 to 21. It says, a man's stomach shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. The New Living Translation. Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. The tongue can bring death and life. And those who love to talk will reap its consequences. We're talking about the power of words. And when we ended last week, for those of you who were listening, we were talking about, we were teaching about our words. We said this, when we speak, doesn't matter who it is, does not matter who it is, when you speak, things happen. Rather, when you speak, people respond. Or the universe responds. And things happen. Say that with me. When I speak, people or things respond. And things happen. Just think about it. You maybe have a little dog or a cat or something. Yeah. Doesn't matter what language that you are speaking. But when you speak, even your dog will respond. Even your cat will respond. And things will happen. That's how God has created it. The universe came into existence because of the word of God. Therefore, the universe, and I really mean that, and I'll show you in the scripture, the universe will respond to the words that come out of your mouth. Very true. But here's the thing also. What you think, you will focus on. Mm -hmm. And when you focus on that, then you have a tendency now to confess what you are focusing on. Mm -hmm. And then when you confess it, that's what you will get. Amen. So like when I said last week, ice cream. Mm -hmm. Okay, the mind begin to respond. Mm -hmm. And the person will say to themselves, I am going to, to get, get some, some ice, cream. ice cream. Or if there's somebody with them, let us go to and get. get. And simply because... They heard the word ice cream, even though they were not thinking about it, but it created something in them that is now responding to it. To satisfy the stomach. The stomach. Because <laughs> a man's stomach <laughs> is filled by the word. Yeah. But it, it, it's very, very important, mm -hmm. you know, what you say. Because here I have this friend, and she said when she came to America, she desired to be a nurse, but she couldn't speak pure English. Proper English. And so the, one of the family members tell her, forget that. Don't even try, because you will never achieve that goal. And she was very, very determined to prove her wrong. Again, she was, and she was able to do it. Prove her wrong. She, she put all her efforts into everything, and she studied really hard. And now she's a great nurse. Amen. You know, so you have to have that desire and that conviction and that determination that no one would stop you from what you want to be. Amen. No one would do that. You have that thing in you. You know that this is what the Lord is leading you to. And you just run with it, regardless of it. That's why I'm saying stop talking. Stop telling people certain things that you know you want to achieve until you achieve it. Because some of them, they have that jealous spirit, and they would try to keep you down. 
but you have to rise and know that God is with you and God will help you as long as you trust him. Yeah. And, and that's why I believe the necessity to verbalize, you know, to say. It, it's not just keep it in there, but if you got to say it to yourself, say it get to into yourself. the mirror, mm -hmm. say it to yourself, release it, like you say, into the earth, because the earth realm has been, is made to be able to respond to words. But usually I will advise people to write those positive things on the mirror because you're always in the mirror looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you look in the mirror, see those positive words coming back to you. So that would encourage you so you can go forward with it. Amen. Last time you wanted to ask So, okay, yeah. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I know when, when you became a Christian, mm -hmm. you had a desire to be more than just sitting in church. Right. You wanted to become something more. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you went to the pastor and told him. And he came to me. The pastor came to you, okay. The pastor came to you and asked, me. And asked you if you would like to be in the ministry or so. Okay, you can take yeah, it from Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. He, he came to me and, well, he, he told me that God told him mm -hmm. that I was called to the ministry. And at that time, I had no, no idea. idea about what, what ministries. What? I just got saved. Mm -hmm. And um, all I knew, I didn't want to be an just ordinary Christian just church. sitting in the church. Doing nothing. But, but I had a plan in my mind mm -hmm. as to what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to go to England and join my mother. Mm -hmm. And I always loved the military. Mm -hmm. And I was going to go into the military uh, <laughs> and go to, you know, one of the military school and became, you know, become spend a lifetime in the military. And mm -hmm. when I retired, I would become a lawyer mm -hmm. and then go back to Dominica and become a politician. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, that was what that I was wanted what you to you wanted. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. But when he said this to me. Ministry. Ministry. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, but I felt like, hey, yes, yes. if that's what God wants. Mm -hmm. But anyway, all other doors <clears throat> closed except ministry. Ministry. Mm -hmm. And the way it happened is the person came from an island, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact, mm -hmm. he was... The, at the time, the, 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 the mayor, the mayor, okay. uh, uh, mm -hmm. eventually became the mayor of Port of Spain. Mm -hmm. And he told my pastor, he said, if you have anybody in your church mm -hmm. who wants to I, go to ministry, feel called to the I ministry, will you'll, you'll I will sponsor. sponsor them, give them a full scholarship. Mm -hmm. That was for three years. And he said, yes, I know such a person. So he went over to speak to the, the at the time, the superintendent. Mm -hmm and uh, what he was going to do. And the superintendent said to him, no, I don't think that you should, you know, invest, invest in, in him mm. because I, I don't think he would amount to anything. anything. He would be a total failure. Mm. But when, when I heard this, mm. I determined, you know, see, I that, said that, to myself, that's difference. I yeah. am going to prove him You wrong. see, that's the difference. Yeah. When you hear something negative and you know in your spirit now, you sense it now, God is leading you into that, that avenue that is spoken over your life, the positive one. Yeah. You determine now in your spirit now, now I'm going to show him and I'm going yeah. to show the world what I can do. Because you believe now that this, this, this is of God now, yeah. because you get, you get in yeah. now oppositions. Yeah, because I love my pastor at the time. I believed his word. Like I said, I didn't know anything about ministry. I wasn't thinking about ministry. I had a plan in my life. I was still a teenager, maybe 19 years mm -hmm. old. I had a plan in my life. Ministry wasn't it, okay? Ministry wasn't it, but I believed the word that he said, God said. Mm -hmm. And to me, whatever God said, this was what I wanted. Okay, so I believed that word. And so when the negative came, I refused to accept it. And as much as I didn't know much, 
about ministry. But I was going to take the scholarship mm -hmm. and do and, and my prove, best prove and him, prove. Right. And as a matter of fact, you know, I don't know some if he's years, still alive some, and some still using late, it. Some years later, when, when he, he went to some church and you were preaching, when you were finished, he came up to you and said, you know, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. You remember? He said he, no, he no, was wrong. Yeah, he said he yeah. was wrong As because he saw fact. now. And he even said, and you even preaching better, better than, than me. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, and I remember, you know, and it's not all about what it's just yes, matter well, of what you say. Of it. You yeah. know, I, I remember growing up as a little boy in Dominica, and I always liked the world to, you know, listen to the news and read a lot about world events. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, boats, you big ships used to come and take people to England, you know, right, and right. I, I always used to look one across day, the one ocean day, one and day. I would say to myself, one day, one day, <laughs> I, I am going to get into one of these boats and, and I'm going to back. go so far, far away. I'm going to see the world. And, and you then, know, uh, it happened. one day, it happened. It happened. Mm -hmm. I got into a boat, but this time I was going to pursue ministry. <laughs> I got into a boat mm -hmm. and left that island, the, that wharf that I used to go by every Saturday and watch the boats come and go. And I got into a boat and headed to Trinidad. <laughs> and I have been to so many parts of the world. Yeah, uh -huh. And the reality is... I remember going back to Dominic, somebody came up to us and said, man, are you still alive? We were wondering where you were. So listen, the things that you say, yeah. you know, becomes reality. And you have to be careful, very careful what you say, because here is the promise. It's a way we say, words are powerful. Words have creative power. And remember this, when you speak, people respond and things happen. See that? When you speak. See, if the pastor had never spoken, I don't know if I would have ever been going to, you know, to Bible school. If the man came from Trinidad and had never spoken, to my pastor. Mm -hmm. He would have never what is your desire? come to me mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. And look where I am today. So many people. Again, you have to know who to speak to. Yeah. Because as I say, you don't go around talking and telling people stuff and things. Because some of them have that negative and that jealous spirit in them. So you have to know now who you can trust and who you can talk to. If you were able to talk to the pastor, you can trust your pastor huh? because you know very well he has, he has good intentions for you. So that's why you're able to tell him and then he's able to help you. Yeah, and, and, and I keep emphasizing this because of the power of words. When you speak, people respond. Things respond and things happen. Things happen. So you can make things happen by the words that you speak. And we have so many examples in the word of God. And we will talk about some of them. Like David, you know, how before he mm -hmm. physically defeated Goliath, that there was so much speaking mm -hmm. that was go taking place. Uh, and you're facing a giant maybe. And the giant has spoken to you. Well, you can also speak to you your giant. It. You, you can, can defeat, defeat your giant. But well, here's what Jesus says. Uh, and we will continue with this thing because our time is going, because we're having a good time. And we trust that you are having a good time as we speak about the power of the word. In Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 23, Jesus speaking. Jesus answered and said unto them, because the disciples, they were excited about something that had happened. Jesus had spoken, and something happened. He'd spoken to a fig tree, and they saw it died, and they drew it to attention. Jesus, look, the fig tree that you spoke to, you cursed, it's dead. It, look at it, it's withered. And Jesus is responding to them. 
based on what they are seeing because of what Jesus said. And so Jesus is responding to them, and he's not saying to them, okay, man, I am the son of God. What do you expect? You know, I am the son of God. All things were created by me, through me. You know, I was there with him when he said, let us make man. I was there, Elohim, with God. I was with him. He, he, so that, that, that's not for you. That's on a different category. That just has to do with me. But remember what we said from the beginning. Man was created in the image and likeness of God. Spirit being. And just as God had dominion over the entire universe, he brought it into existence. God gave man dominion over the whole earth. And here's what Jesus is responding to them and is saying. Some of you, I might hear you say, well, that's not for today. Who says it's not for today? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever. God is the same. God has not changed. He is eternal from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. God. He is God. And so don't say, well, that was for their time. No, it is for now. So Jesus said and answered and said unto them, have faith in God or have faith, faith like the God, faith the God-like God kind of faith. Because by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. For assuredly I say unto you, whosoever, oh, I like this, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says will be done, he shall have whatsoever he says. Now, this is not my opinion here. This is the word of the Lord. And while I, why do I believe that he wasn't just speaking to his time, to these particular disciples? He used the very inclusive word that spanned generations. He says, who so ever so you can take off that whosoever and you can put your name make it there. personal you can make it personal mm -hmm. so if your name is Leroy as my name is Leroy he said if Leroy shall say if Leroy will have faith like God and Leroy shall say like God said if John if Abdul, if Rachel, if Maria shall say, if Maria will have faith like God and shall say unto this mountain. And I will show you that he wasn't talking about, oh, a spiritual mountain. And you could very well say that. It's a real mountain. But he's talking about a real mountain. The definite article in English of this is a definite article that is pointing to something. But you remember years ago when we were in Israel, we were right there. Yeah. Right there where that mountain was, where mm -hmm. he said it. And the ocean was right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can see it was just a, a literal thing. A it literal was not, thing. It was not just something... You know, a metaphor yeah. or so. Right. You know, and for us to say, oh, it was a metaphor, or he was just speaking spiritually, no. then we can say the whole world is a metaphor <laughs> and just speaking spiritually. No, he, he, he uh, was speaking to a reality. Real mountain, a real and mountain. You, you say, well, how come we, we don't see this? Well, well remember, mm -hmm. number one, there has to be determination of what is the will of God. Mm. Well, what is the necessity right now of removing a mountain? But the potential mm. is there. Mm. The potential is there. You know, that, you know, there used to be a, a, a 
contractor in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. His name, I think, was Mohan, and they used to have a, a thing say, Mohan Move Mountain, mm -hmm. that he used his tractors to right, make roads. Right, knocked down the Yeah, mountain. knocked down the place. But, you know, and, and it is so important that we understand what God is saying. And he, he gives us element how this can happen. You see, you can say something and it doesn't happen, but Jesus qualified mm -hmm. how it's going to happen. How it's going to happen. What would make and shall not doubt, doubt, doubt. in yes. his heart. That's important. And we're going to come to the mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. of the heart separating from the mind so that when we speak, that make things happen. I want you to and, go ahead and, and speak no and doubt, pray you know, that. the important thing here is when you believe what God says, you don't have any trace of doubt because at the moment, as I said before, if you have any trace of doubt in what you say, because he says that in his word, when, when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have it. Everything was positive with whatever he is saying. And so when, when, when you release your faith, you cannot afford to doubt because when you doubt, you cancel the solution and the Amen. answer to your problem. Amen. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we know that many are listening. We want them not to be just listeners but, and hearers, but we want them to apply these things to their lives so that they can see change, they can see transformation in their lives in the name of Jesus. We know, Lord, that you are real, you are alive, and you mean what you say. And so in Jesus' name, Lord, as everyone listen, we pray that they would realize that you are not like man to lie to them, and you will bring everything to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. And don't forget this. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Until next time, we love you and God bless you. Thank you for watching our program today. We trust you are encouraged. To connect with us, our website is www.pastorwlj.com. Until next time, be blessed.